James, if I could get Hake in here, I want to really deal with this Omar Nebraska story where this bar owner, Jake Gardner, was accused or allegedly killed himself. It's such a sad, sad story. And I just, we started out yesterday dealing with it, James and I, the hate report guy, but we ran out of time. And it's such an amazing story. So James is here. He loved boomers. <laughs> True. <laughs> the hate report loved boomers. You have that on your store site? I do. TheHakeReport.com, and then <clears throat> you can find my Teespring store there. Oh, okay. So this is from KT, I mean KETV. This is out of Omar. Omar. Omaha. O Omaha. Omar. Omaha, Nebraska bar owner Jake Gardner took his own life on Sunday after being indicted on charges in the self-defense shooting of a 22-year-old black male blackmail attacker uh, by the name of James Skurlock. Yep. Am I right? Mm -hmm. James Skurlock. And uh, we're showing you that right now. This happened back on May 30th during a violent riot after the death of George happened there. Here's the sound bite. The officers in Hillsboro, Oregon, confirmed they found Jake Gardner's body. That's just west of Portland. He faced charges in Douglas County for the shooting death of James Skurlock in May. Attorneys Stu Dornan and Tom Monahan reveal the moments leading up to a deadly night in May. He was present when what he thought was a shot came through the front window. It was actually a pole that was thrown through the front window. And individuals began to climb into the front window to begin to vandalize his bar. Jake Gardner's defense team says he pulled the fire alarm in his business, called police, then went outside. That's when his encounter with 22-year-old James Skurlock started. Earlier this month, a grand jury led by special prosecutor Fred Franklin says that evidence showed Gardner's state of mind before the shooting. The grand jury was able to have information from his cell phone, from his Facebook Messenger account, Gardner's attorneys stand firm. Their client is innocent, calling the indictment shocking. This violence must stop. The justice system must be allowed to do its work. Cases should be decided in a courtroom and not on social media. Amazing. So... That one little point there, this man, um, Gardner, was found that he did nothing wrong with self-defense in the beginning, right? That's correct. And then they said, oh, no, we don't like that. This white man getting away with something. Yeah. And so they like, oh, and the people like, if you don't stop, we're going to riot and burn down things and destroy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just I mean, by intimidation. <laughs> yeah, they showed up outside the, the attorney's house. Being messy. The white guy? They should, the, the, the guy that was speaking about this must stop? No, that guy is a lawyer for the, uh, Gardner. So which, how, who was the attorney? The attorney was Douglas County Attorney Don Klein. K-L-E-I-N-E. And he was representing Jim Gardner? No, he was not representing I mean, anybody. Jay. He was the district attorney. He's the Douglas County attorney. The black the guy? The prosecutor. No. The white guy? The, the white guy wasn't shown. There's, oh, they were just showing him. Don Klein. And so Don Klein... Don Klein showed that it was self-defense. He was oh, not okay. going to charge him. And so the rioter showed up at his house after he said it was self-defense? Mm -hmm. And because they showed up, they, he went and changed his mind? He said, okay, let's... After consulting with elected officials who represent predominantly black neighborhoods, meaning black radicals, right? Yeah. He asked for a grand jury and a special prosecutor. What and the, the special prosecutor who was chosen was chosen by this female judge, Shelley Stratman, and she appointed this Frederick Franklin guy, that, it, black, that black radical who was talking about, oh, we got m Facebook Messenger and cell phone stuff from this guy. Is she black? No, she's a white female. Oh, I don't know if she's normal white, but yeah. And so they said, okay, we got to get a grand jury. 
because we don't like the fact that this white man protected himself and got away with it. Right. From the blacks. Uh Uh-huh. After they punched his father to the ground and broke up his bar, broke the windows of his bar and tried to riot inside his bar. So he got there from Wikipedia. Uh, Jake Garner's father had been punched and knocked to the ground. Yep. And he and he himself was tackled. Gardner left riot. I mean, let riot know that he had a gun. Skurlock jumped on Gardner's back. The black guy did. Mm-hmm. And that's Skurlock. Yeah, James Skurlock. He jumped on Gardner's back and put him in choke hold. I thought you can't do that anymore. That's only if you're a cop. <laughs> in a liberal town. So the black people said, don't do choke holes, and they're running around doing choke holes. What yep. the? Shameful. And got <laughs> a shot in black criminal, and he died in the hospital. Also, Joe Skurlock is dead. J- James Skurlock. He dead. Yeah, he died. What a, what a mess. Some people. And, and they were rioting over George Floyd, which is like however many hundreds of miles away. Because <laughs> George Floyd died in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So, this is up in Omaha, Nebraska. Why are they riding up there over that? And one Stupid. George Floyd high? Yes. He overdosed on fentanyl. <laughs> <laughs> Deadly levels of fentanyl in his system, I heard. Amazing. How do we know that Jim Gardner wasn't killed and, and not committed suicide? We don't know anything, but we were told that it was a, su- a suicide. And who told y'all that? Fox News. Tucker Carlson on Fox News called it a suicide. And other people said that he shot himself. How do they know it was a suicide? Did they say why they knew that? What's no, I haven't looked into it at all. Is it possible that because this guy had an encounter with a black person, he could have been killed by somebody? It's possible. He was way over in... Hillsboro, Oregon. What are you doing over there? You well, running? I don't know. He was evicted from his businesses by the people who own the building where he was renting two businesses right. next door to each other because they had received threats. Oh. And they, they claimed, oh, he, uh, he was behind on payments. We're evicting him. What? <laughs> Instead of saying, we scared. Right. Amazing. So he's, and they've painted two huge mural, murals, at least two huge mur, murals of this James Skurlock guy making him into a hero and a martyr in <laughs> Omaha, Nebraska. That's what blacks do. They, they take the it's worst. It's not blacks. It's, it, I mean, it's not just blacks. It's the liberals, like uh, the over white 100 liberals. artists. Yep. I mean, it, it is blacks but too, of course. But white liberals don't understand that they're setting themselves up to be destroyed because if they one time decide not to kiss kiss the butts of the black, Uh they're going to be out of there too. Right. But they got to keep kissing the butts. I know. And even this guy's favorite band betrayed him. He... (laughs) Jim, who, uh, Jake? Jake Gardner. His, the bar was also a music venue where this huge band that even I had heard of, and I was Christian sheltered person. (laughs) Uh, You say that again. (laughs) They, Homemade uh, Christian. They performed at his place, at his, uh, the Hive is what it, the location was called. And they performed there. There was a bunch of their stuff uh, displayed there, 311. And they called him racist and said that he did a senseless act of violence and was a bigot and just totally backstabbed him. They doing this out of fear? Of course. And so did he... Is it true that he didn't pay his rent and that's why they threw him out? Or what well, we don't know. If we don't sure know. Or not. But this was in the middle of COVID shutdown times. Oh. This was in the end of May. And you know, um, March was when they started preventing people from doing their business. So a lot of people were beh- probably behind on rent. So yeah. I don't know. They tried to get a bill passed in California where you don't even have to pay rent. Because yeah. of Chinese, they exactly. should never let black people know they ain't got to pay no rent. Yeah, there's this big push, no evictions and stuff like that. It's oh, crazy. Man. Thank you, Hate. Mm-hmm. Made this guy so rest in peace. Yeah. Um, horrible. But it's going to get worse until the people speak up. He was a Marine veteran, too. He wow. had PTSD. Wow.
and brain injuries. I bet you coming back and going through this in his own country was worse than going through whatever. Yeah. When he was in the military. Yeah. Because he's at home and this is happening. Um, so there's one other point about it. Yeah. So there's these two politicians who are state senators, Justin Wayne, who's like a light skinned black guy, fat. And he was calling for, um, they were calling Life for a black guy fat. <laughs> <laughs> they were dog? calling for a, like an investigation and stuff like that. And this other one, state Senator Megan Hunt, who is a supposedly white female bisexual single mother, 34 years old, also saying the indictment of Jake Gardner. This is after Jake Gardner was found dead in Portland, Oregon. She said the indictment. Indictment of Jake Gardner would never have happened without the community, the people who stood up for justice and demanded action from city officials. Jake Gardner is gone, but the white supremacist attitudes that emboldened him are still with us today. And she went on and accused him of being in communication with white supremacist groups and all kinds of stuff. Amazing. And then paying lip service to suicide and depression and stuff like that. White people, y'all hanging your own stuff and don't know it. Really? You're setting yourself up by feeding into these lies. And you're putting in the impression that to angry people, which are the blacks, that all white people hate them. You're really setting yourself. It's so crazy to see it. I don't know what to do. It's like someone, you, you're going to the edge of the bridge. You're about to fall off. You don't see it. But I'm yelling, no, no, you're about to fall off. But you don't believe it because you don't see it. And you end up falling off the bridge. It reminds me of what's going on, what they're trying to do to Kyle Rittenhouse, too. They're just oh, lying. Do they're we just... have that, Nick? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we have amazing update about that. Yeah. That's mind-blowing. They're such hypocrites. Yeah. <laughs> Poor white people. Mm -hmm. So listen, what are you talking about on your show today? I'm going to touch on Trayvon Martin and Kyle Rittenhouse because Trayvon, that thing hey, is... He did? Yeah, but he was trending on, he was trending on Twitter. How's he trending if he did? Because... Kyle Rittenhouse was referred to by this lady on Fox News as a little boy defending <laughs> his community, <laughs> trying to defend his community. And they said, well, he's 17 and Trayvon Martin was 17 and Trayvon Martin wasn't a little boy to you guys. Well, and they're just trying to compare them. Well, what's the name? Wasn't a little boy. The I know. Guy with the gun? Yeah. He had no, he was a gun. young man. That boy, wait until you, he had that gun like a true soldier. Yep. He's I mean, awesome. it was so amazing to see how 17 years old, how he was able to protect himself. Yeah, it was very... Everybody needs to learn how to shoot like that. And be cool-headed like that. Yeah, that duh, cool. who? <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. It That's was why amazing. I call him Kyle Jack Bauer John Wick Rittenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Anyway. So that's the hate report at 9 a.m.? Yeah. To what? Till 11 a.m. And how do people get there? TheHakeReport.com slash show. And I'm back on YouTube. I oh, think. Yeah. <laughs> I was yesterday. Live? Yep. Really? Nice. It's hard on a black man in America. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wait till late October. I uh, know. What a man. <laughs> One monkey don't stop no show. Well, anyway, The Hate Report at 9 a.m. I want to go to my guest here. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe. And share the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it. <laughs>